Metropole TVKA across all your social media platforms 2146 that is 20146 as your SMS line uh, we are at all your social media platforms again at Metropole TVKE even as we come close to an end I am at Kiage Simba on our Twitter let's close the year for what has been one of the toughest for the Kenyan economy and different industries and sectors today we speak about Kenya's education sector which faces a growing task of recouping the calendar year it has already lost in 2020 after being forced to take a break in March 2020 due to the shutdown caused by the coronavirus pandemic now the pandemic exposed the numerous challenges that the sector has been facing with the financing and capacity among the top challenges that the pandemic vividly brought out quite a number of private schools in the country have been forced to close shop after running into capital issues whether some hit badly enough to see them never come back again in a 2021. Now the Ministry of Education running under the leadership of Professor George Magoha took different stances on the reopening of the schools finally settling on a phased reopening which will finally have all the schools reopen on January the 4th 2021 after candidates in class 8 form 4 as well as grade 4 got back to school in October 2020. Now the resumption in October 2020 was not without questions on the management of the pandemic in schools, a move that has already had ramifications with some school heads and students already falling victim to the coronavirus pandemic. Wow. To help us close what has been quite a tough year for the sector this morning, we have quite a panel and I'd like to introduce them one after the other. We're going to be joined by Peter Ndoro, Chairperson, Kenya Private Schools Association, Otoa Sifuna, who's an educational expert, and Kennedy Echessa, who's an advocate and law lecturer at the University of Nairobi. Now, let me start with you, Otoa Sifuna, this morning. Talk to me. I mean, what will you feel that the education sector has fared under the coronavirus pandemic? Oh, Simba, uh, 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 quite a pleasure having me again on Metropole TV. And, and I really want to send my very sincere appreciation to, uh, to, to Metropole TV for giving a, quite a sizable junk of your airtime on matters that really touch the Kenyans and... Uh, in this regard, talk about matters education. Yes. Very, very important yes. that you are you are streaming and your segmentation in terms of um, uh, what you're doing is, is is quite spot on. And no wonder you are one of the fastest uh, growing uh, TV station in 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 the region. Thank you very uh, much, having sir. Said, <laughs> having said that, um, uh, it's been a rough bumper. It's been a rough ride for our uh, sector in education. I, as an educational expert. I can reckon that uh, uh, when history shall be written, yes, uh, 2020 uh, will be one of the most uh, toughest year in the academic calendar. It has seen um, many of our programs collapse. It has seen um, 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 many of our, um, our you know, uh, with the academic calendar, once you have a disruption, it, it, it's always very, very uh, difficult actually to... Uh, to, to go back to the drawing board and like uh, maybe in, in financials uh, where if you make uh, a loss you can quickly uh, go back to the books of, of account and um, and, and uh, uh, make up uh, what was wrong yes uh, I did say this when I was on uh, on this TV some time back that this was uh, a health crisis it wasn't an educational crisis and therefore we in the sector have been uh, asking one very difficult question how shall we sort out the health crisis that uh, orchestrated the closure of our learning institutions? Yes. And, and uh, I want to tell you, uh, Simba, it's quite unfortunate that uh, uh, some few weeks to the uh, opening of uh, the entire school uh, schools now in Kenya on 4th of January, uh, if you did a survey or a visit to uh, the Kenyan uh, schools and, and learning institutions, you realize that the very uh, glaring um, uh, 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 what dangers that uh, faced us in March and uh, led to closure, they are still there. The yes. schools have not uh, 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 improved so much in terms of infrastructure. The personnel, and in this regard, I'm talking about the teachers, have not been hired enough. Um, the psychosocial support 
Uh, and, and I think that is the most important thing, is that uh, we have not done again as much as it is uh, to reassure the parents, the teachers, and the learners themselves that come 4th of January, yes. we shall authoritatively say uh, we are reopening our schools with a lot of confidence. Yes. That, I record has not been fulfilled. Mr. Sifon, I'm going to cross over to you so we can talk about that as to why you feel that on the ground things are quite different as opposed to what the yes. ministry is telling us and what the president's plan is actually on the reopening of the schools on the 4th of January 2021. Let me come back into the studio to Kennedy. All right, let's talk about the university level there. But you've been there for the past three months. I do understand now you're on the last round of administering exams to this university students. As you again wait to come back almost immediately again on January 4th to continue with what you have lost since March to date. Talk to me. What have you observed? Are we ready to reopen the, the, the universities on January 4th? Uh, thank you very much. I can uh, state here as a teacher yes. that we are not ready to reopen for physical learning on 4th of January. Yes. For the reasons that the way we left the universities in March is the same way the universities are. There is no change. Yes. In any event, enrollment is going to go up and therefore we cannot sit under the same circumstances and at the same time observe the World Health Organization regulations regarding the corona pandemic. Yes. We therefore will urge government and the ministry to allow online teaching, online examination and evaluation yes. as we move towards uh, combating the pandemic. Which was actually my next question for you, Kennedy, this morning. Because yes, we say, let's assume the online learning system. Is it, talk to me about capacity. Is it possible to fully assume that model come 2021? Or a lot needs to be done around that area. We need to do a lot. One, remember that the poverty levels are very high amongst our students. Yes. Most of them cannot afford these gadgets. Yes. And even the few can afford gadgets through the assistance of other relatives and well-wishers. Cannot afford bundles. A single class takes about uh, three hours and you could have up to three classes in a day. Yes. Those are about nine hours. You require to be fairly rich to afford such a kind of luxury. And two, we are still teaching with, uh, dealing with young adults. These are people who can uh, divert. If you are in class, you think you are teaching them. And they are on their own programs, yes. watching whatever they watch and doing whatever they do. And therefore, that teacher-student interaction is not effectively monitored during the online learning. It is not something that we should encourage for the entire university education. Yes. It is better done on the pilot program so that we improve and secondly, is that uh, it, 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 it brings about some sort of laziness, even yes. amongst us as teachers. We no longer prepare. Uh, you're just told you're in a hotel, you're over class, you go into a room somewhere, and you begin teaching. Yes. And I want to say that the quality of teaching among us teachers is also reduced drastically. Especially when we're talking about online system uh, mode of learning. Yes. yes. And look at the online evaluation, for instance. Yes. The physical examination takes about two and a half hours, three hours, with strict regulations. But with online examination, we are giving students up to 24 hours to sit the exams and then uh, log into their scripts and give us the results. There is a possibility that strangers have been sitting exams for these learners. So even the quality of examination of that online program yes. is wanting. Yes. Yeah. And we have no means to say that Simba sat the exam because we gave you an exam on the online platform we left you for 24 hours, you sat the exam, and then you keyed in the results. As to whether it is your brother who did it, or you hired a mercenary, we are not aware. <laughs> and we shall evaluate you, yes. we shall graduate you, and release you to the industry. And that is where you will get uh, incompetent and ineffective yes. graduates yes. coming to the industry and doing very little. Pretty much, Kennedy, I'm going to come back to you on that because if we can't use then that as a solution, then what stands in place as the only way out? All right, let me come back to you, Sifuna. Good. You've been back. 
you observed it for three months and I know you're gonna go maybe for a five day break, get back again and come back on January 4th, you're back in the system up and running. Let's talk about that. I mean, is it possible to say, well, because the numbers in the schools are going to increase now, come January 4th, that maybe we could start sort of piloting online systems of teaching to say, probably it's possible that we can actually start conducting our classes online. Is that possible for primary level education in this country and secondary level education in this country from where you're sitting this morning? Yeah, uh, Simba, a very good question. Um, uh, I, I have said that uh, teachers in this country are quite innovative. They are yes. very industrial. Yes. And, and they, can, they, they can really work through very extreme um, environment to marshal all that uh, support and, and, and all that. That is if they are actually um, uh, supported in terms of the working relationship, uh, the working conditions and, and, and all that. You, you have just said that it's going to be a crazy uh, calendar for us and even the learners. You know, the brain is not um, a programmed machine where you switch on and switch off. Uh, the learners are just going to have five days of uh, Christmas break and then they are back. The teachers have been uh, running marathon all along and, and up until uh, the summative assessments shall be done yes. in the month of March and April next year. It's going to be quite a crazy and, and marathon uh, year for us. That uh, having been said, uh, the digital learning uh, uh, platform and the infrastructure in this country, uh, Simba, it, it is not, uh, I, I can give it less than uh, 30%. It, it, to me, if you did ask my honest opinion as a I would say that uh, access to digital uh, uh, and, uh, online learning, uh, teaching and learning, is a preserve of, of, of the rich, is a luxurious um, uh, entity for the poor. Uh, the Kenyan government came up with a very robust program on, on what we call um, uh, laptops for schools. Yes. However, that uh, project did not see the light of the day. If you go to, the, uh, to, to, to most of the schools, you will see that, those, uh, um, that, uh, that actually that project did not succeed. If that project did succeed, uh, Simba, I, c I could tell you here that Kenya um, as a country, we are on the roadmap to ensure that we have got teaching and learning happening online. However, I, I, I happen to be in one of the, the, the schools that I can say that it is uh, somehow prestigious. Uh, it can access all this uh, courtesy of, 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 of the sponsor that uh, uh, ensures that the learners are provided with uh, what they require. Uh, but you visit any remote school, you visit any modest uh, poor family in this uh, country uh, of, of ours, you realize that they are struggling to get where the next meal is going to come from. When you tell them about uh, bundles and access to the internet or the Wi-Fi, you will actually be speaking a very alien language to them. Yes. So I, I can tell you for sure that um, if we implemented uh, uh, the laptop project, and uh, uh, recently you also had our, our very good president, uh, Uru Mugai Kenyatta, talk of uh, provision of... Um, uh, uh, what you call Google Luna uh, Internet. If those boardroom suggestions and uh, deliberations are put into practice, I'm telling you, this country will be far beyond even the Vision 2030 and the blueprint uh, blueprints that uh, uh, they keep on discussing in the in the in the boardroom. Yes. However, um, um, I, I think teachers are, are really uh, uh, the frontline workers. They are the bona fide front uh, frontline workers. Our other friend, uh, do, uh, friends, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, whom we share the front line working, the medics, you saw they have uh, hung their boots because of the working uh, uh, conditions. It's very pathetic. People are dying. Teachers are dying. Doctors are dying. Something needs to be done, uh, Simba. Yes. It is unfortunate that we lose uh, our, our colleagues, teachers. It's unfortunate that we lose our students on a quest that we know that this is the service to humanity and it is said service to humanity is a service to god can the government can our good government kindly come up and 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 just do the bare minimum to support the teachers implementer and navigate through this uh, covid 19 uh hard times interesting you should say that let me come back to uh kennedy your ministry 
or your sector is running under new man in that office, Professor George Magoha, who we did see get appointed um, at the start of 2020. You will say that after the first quarter of 2020. How would you rate his performance so far? I mean, he's a technocrat, fine, but would you rate his performance so far? Because he walked into a crisis. Has he managed it properly? Would you lay blame on the way that things have gone wrong in the second and say that is solely because of that man? One, I want to make it very clear from where I sit that Professor George Albert Magoha was a tragedy. The Minister of Education, his appointment was unfortunate. Uh, unfortunately, Kenyans uh, think that uh, he is uh, the best thing that occurred. Yes. And uh, if Magoha will not be the minister today, yes. My conscience tells me the ministry will be doing much better. In, in than what, it is in doing what today. points would you discredit his performance One, in 2020? His performance is wanting, yes. it's below average, and I think he should rate as uh, one of the worst education CSS we've ever <laughs> had in the history, <laughs> other than Professor Jacob Kaimeni. Yes. And unfortunately, these men who rate very lowly in these uh, ministries are professors. Yes. When Kaimeni came from the University of Nairobi, we thought that the ministry was going to take off. Yes. And then Magoha came with a lot of hope, having done what he did at NEC, and then people were saying, no, 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 we have the best man at the ministry. George has failed for the following reasons. Yes. One, George is exceptionally arrogant. He has some feeling of exaggerated sense of self-importance, and therefore he is not a team player. And without a team, you cannot do much at the ministry. He is a lone ranger. Yes. He may be a competent man, but his style of working has uh, pushed away some of the technocrats at the ministry who have been there for as many as 20 years yes. so that he does not tap on their experience and expertise. Yes. He is one gentleman who believes that everyone around him is stupid and is the only intelligent person. You remember the latest uh, scandal you had of calling some education officer a stupid man in public. That man may have been stupid, but in his stupidity, he has handled that county for some years. And then secondly, I think some of the policies uh, yes. that Georgia has adopted in the past uh, six, seven months in the wake of corona crisis yes. are not any helpful. We sent our students home on the presidential directive uh, around March. As the Minister for Education, he needs to have been at the forefront of ensuring that we turn around our infrastructure in yes. schools. Yes. We build classrooms, we, we, we employ more teachers, we negotiate with Teacher Service Commission, we lobby for funding from Parliament and from other development partners. But he has not been doing, you know, as a CS, he should not be traveling to Eldoret to see how more university is prepared. You have spun up people in the ministry who can travel your work is policy and guide the ministry in the right direction yes. otherwise chest thumping will not yield much and true to my word the ministry has not done anything remarkable that will go back to school in January and say were it not for the Ministry of Education this mission was going to be impossible we are where we were and I mean, appears to have been yes. now a better team player, a better candidate in that, in yes. that particular ministry. <laughs> Despite all the calls also for her credibility. Fine. At this point, I can see we have a Peter Ndobo this morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning to you. I'm so sorry for joining in late. We totally understand that has been the norm in 2020. We have to come to terms with technology. Now, I want to ask you two questions so that you are up to speed, up to where we are in this conversation this morning. Now... The question is, are we ready to reopen schools fully for our students come 4th of January 2021? And how will you rate the performance of the education sector so far in managing the crisis in 2020? Give us an outlook. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me. And uh, answering your two questions, I want to start by first of all uh, saying it is not about whether uh, we are ready to reopen, to fully reopen in January of 2021. It is about how are we going to reopen our schools yes. and ensure that our learners are safe, teachers are safe, and all the stakeholders are actually safe. Yes. You realize that uh, most of our learners would actually uh, be uh, clocking almost nine months yes. out of school. And as a country, we cannot afford any longer to have these children stay at home. 
for a further period. Yes. What we need to, to do at the moment is to look at what are some of these guidelines that have been given to us by the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Health, in as far as uh, making the environment in schools safe for our learners. Are we having the uh, hand washing stations at uh, um, the very critical places, that, uh, at strategic points within the school? Are we uh, ensuring that our learners are actually educated on how to prevent themselves and take care of themselves in as far as COVID is concerned. Yes. That is what we need to be asking ourselves, and that is actually what we should be doing at this point in time. So it is not about whether we are ready. I want to believe that if we do certain things properly, then we will be ready to admit our uh, the children back in school. Yes. Yes. All right. And at the moment... Yes, let me just get back to you on that. But you feel that there's that drive so far, Mr. Ndoro, going by some of the cases or some of the news that we've got from the education sector that, well, an entire population of students have been infected and we have reports of even some students who've passed on in some of the schools that were reopened. So far, um, what we can say that is that uh, we have had over 2.5 million learners yes. who have who have reopened. Yes. That is the grade four, the class eight, and uh, form four. And so far, the number of children who we've had that have been affected, uh, seriously affected by uh, COVID, so far is, uh, is, is, is about uh, two or something. Uh, the, the, the ones that I know, I know at this point in time, it's yes. about two cases. Yes. I'm not saying that should happen, no. But what we should be asking ourselves is that uh, what is it that you are going to do? Because we are all aware of the fact that we may not have a post-COVID anytime soon. So we need to ask ourselves, how are we going to live with COVID? How yes. are we going to make ourselves safe? How are we going to protect our children when they are in school, right? In fact, the grade four, class eight, and form four learners who have been in school have given us a very useful experience on how to manage the rest of the students when they come back so we should be asking ourselves what is it that we are going to do based on what we have been able to learn at this point in time pretty much gentlemen i would like us to go for a tiny little break mr Ndoro. once we come back the question is going to be the disparity that we've already spoken of in the education sector between public schools and private schools when it comes to where does the government get the balance? How would they support them? The pandemic for the very first time did expose us that in reality, private schools in this country are operating by themselves. We did see news of parents complaining about getting asked for full school fee when in reality the kids were not going to school. And also, the majority of the private schools are closed again because they went into capital deficits and cash crunches because the students were not there what is the lesson that we can draw from that but again asking ourselves the question this january 4th date is it realistic once we come back here on a business and we're closer the year get involved 2146 that's your sms line at metropole tvke across all your social media platforms let's take a break <laughs> 